I am facing some issues with my Zoom. Can you all hear me? Can you just give me a, a buzz? <laughs> Let me know in the chat if you can hear me clearly. I've been experiencing some problems with my Zoom account. Uh, it appears. I think I could just fix it right now. Can you hear me? If you can, could you press a one in the chat? If you can hear me clearly, and if you can see the screen, which probably has a welcome to third session in it right now. Can you hear me? Okay, this is some technical issues. Oh my God. But now it's been fixed. So welcome everyone. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? I'm so sorry. Today, there seems to be some trouble with my internet as well as the Zoom connection. It keeps on uh, disconnecting for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure. So right now it is much better and I hope you can hear me clearly. So let me know how are you guys feeling? What are you guys doing? And where are you from? Let me know in the chat. Okay, Rekha has joined us. Aditya has joined us. I'm so sorry. I think some of you have been waiting, but for some reason, this Zoom call kept on getting disrupted. And finally, I'm here. So today's session is all about accountability. But first of all, I have seen Pam in the chat as well. But um, are you, um, I have to keep on adding the same person again and again. Okay, no, there is, yes, now it's okay. Can you all hear me? I can see Deepika in the chat and yes, Pam was there. So first of all, let's congratulate our week one's winner who is Pam. Okay, she did a really awesome job. She really worked on herself. She put herself out there. She took a picture of herself. She posted it in the Facebook group. And finally, she really uh, okay, I still am having some issues. All right, I'm good now. And finally, she really got the recognition she deserves because I feel like all of you are working really hard, but Pam just, you know, went one step ahead. She really not only did the workout and the intermittent fasting, she also made sure that she's also, you know, visible in what she's doing. And this is really important because one of the biggest problems we face with fitness is that we are usually a bit shy of it. You know, we're shy of people or we're shy of what people are going to think. How am I going to, you know, look? What are going to people judge me about? And the thing is, that's the thing we really need to overcome. We need to post our pictures and we really need to put ourselves out there so that, you know, um, we feel the difference in our confidence. Today's Zoom session is really getting, you know, uh, I had I had some few internet technical issues and finally it's doing much better than before. Okay, so right now we're going to move on with the session, which is all about accountability. But before that, I would like to tell you another thing that if you really want to join and if you really want to win, the leaderboard which is going on weekly as well as to go on monthly so all you need to do is just you know as spam did just show yourself you know stay committed do the workouts avoid sugar you could post your workout or your videos in the chat in the facebook group of course and basically just play full out and i hope none of you are experiencing any more issues right i mean i'm so sorry this thing keeps on <laughs> disrupting within my conversation. But right now, it seems to be much better, yeah. It's much better than before. So if everything is okay, let's begin our session for today. All right, 
right now i want to ask you if you have started it um you know what could be the hardest thing for you in working out you know what is the most hardest experience for you when it comes to workouts is it uh is it like doing the workout itself is it like so stressful and so difficult that you know you don't feel like doing it you feel lazy you feel like procrastinating is that what keeps you away from working out or is it something else which keeps you away okay uh, for me this is deepika hi nusrat for hi. me i think uh, the, the 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 time i it could be that I'm procrastinating, but I sometimes feel that I don't have the time. I can get up a little bit more earlier than my usual time, but I, I, I'm not doing that, to be honest. And mm -hmm. I get up around six o'clock and I get straight to my schedule. And in the evening, I, I think I'll do it in the evening if I missed in the morning, but I don't get to it. Oh, because I did the 10 minutes time. first yeah. day. Okay, so uh, is there any way you could like squeeze in a few extra minutes to your schedule? I'm sure you're very busy, but you know, perhaps wake up like 10 minutes earlier or 15 minutes earlier, go to bed also 10 or 15 minutes earlier. And you know, one thing I have learned from my coaches is that the way we wake up in the morning, the way we sh show up in the morning is how we show up usually the rest of the day. So they say, they have this saying that, you know, the first thought you're going to think after waking up in the morning is really important. So are you thinking about what work I'm going to do? Or, you know, if you're tense or not in the morning, that how is this presentation going to go? Or what if I bump into someone I don't like? You know, whenever we are focusing on a negative thought or a worrisome thought early in the morning, like just after we wake up, uh, psychology as well as people who are spiritual, they say that, it kind of reflects a bad mood. And that's why you will see that most people who are leaders like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, almost everybody, you will, if you Google it or if you watch it in YouTube, they have this thing called uh, early risers or 5 a.m. club. Now, you do not really need to wake up at 5 a.m., but there is this theory that making the mornings productive, you know, meditating, journaling, or doing workouts in the morning, making a good morning routine is basically the ingredient to make the entire day better. So when you feel like if it's a lack of time regarding workouts, and honestly, most people, even me in the past, did not like working out, you know, the idea of getting up and just pushing myself up to really do that thing. It was always a daunting task. And that is why I have this session today, which is all about, you know, making it more fun for you, making it more engaging. So if it's timing, perhaps you could, you know, take a few moments out. And if it's the task itself. So right now I'm going to do a trick, which is definitely going to be something that, you know, that is going to make working out more pleasurable, more happier for you. Okay, so let me know of one activity that you enjoy a lot using your body. Um, walking or um, jogging. Okay, so do you get to do that a lot uh, throughout a week? No, I think I my thought process, like you mentioned, as soon as I get up is even like the first thing I wake up uh, in my bed only I start thinking, okay, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to get through this today. Mm -hmm. And that's how I start my day. I have to pack the lunch today, what is in the fridge and I, yeah. and, and I think workout that when you mentioned, I think is, it will eat up my time instead yeah. of thinking that as uh, I think it, I'm just going to spend 15 minutes there rather I'll do so much of my other some stuff work, which is some other work yeah 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 I could understand like but um I understand that you have a lot on yourself you know uh in terms of responsibility but you know the thing there is a saying that if our cup's not full how can we serve others so even if it's not workout it's just 10 minutes or 15 minutes even if it's like five to ten minutes if you could just take that time out for yourself especially after waking up as soon as you open your eyes um 
it's really difficult to think of a good thought, right? Because it's very difficult to control our thoughts. We usually navigate to whatever is on that day. So my mm-hmm. advice would be, you know, you could perhaps just sit somewhere in a quiet zone and focus on your breathing, meditate, or uh, a light yoga. Um, it could mm-hmm. also be listening to something beautiful, uplifting. Like when you do yoga, you could look for uplifting morning uh, music or you know meditation music over YouTube. Anything because mm-hmm. when you'll see that uh, you somehow change the dynamics, change the energy of the first moments of the day, somehow it really has a great effect throughout the rest of the day. And that's what people, psychologists say. Um, the two times which are really important for us is the time when we wake up and the time we go to sleep. So if anybody, and uh, a lot of spiritual people agree, if anybody focuses on good thoughts, for example, thoughts of gratitude before sleeping, thoughts of desires, where do you want to see yourself in the future? How do you want to see yourself um, in obviously in good spots, in uh, happy places, when you visualize such things in your mind before going to sleep, that's when the theta state of the brain is activated. So basically our brain has you know, lots of states, uh, delta, theta, beta, alpha. What these are is that when we are the most conscious, like when we're working in our office, uh, we are using the conscious part of our mind. But when we drift off to sleep and when just as soon as we wake up, it's mostly our subconscious mind, which is in control. So these are the very like uh, when you can master this thing, the thought before you go to sleep and the thought after you wake up, when you can master just these two ingredients, you will see that your life would shift, you know, day after day. And the way you can do it is with, like I said, meditation, it could, it doesn't always have to be sitting in a, you know, quiet spot and trying not to think because most people find it really difficult to begin a meditation, right? So instead you could listen to guided meditations over YouTube. You could listen to beautiful music and you could journal, whichever one is convenient for you, whichever one really feels like good for you. And uh, if you do it for five to 10 minutes in the morning, I'm sure you could like do that, right? Just wake up and then listen to something peaceful, listen to some meditation or just focus on your breathing and think of something good. And also you could try affirmations. Today is going to be a great day. Um, I feel really happy and energetic. Whenever you focus your energy on these things, Somehow the energy throughout the day kind of rearranges itself. Um, In the entire day, many things could happen. You know, something bad could happen. Something good could happen. There could be traffic. There could be stressful factors. But these times, like waking up and going to sleep, these are like your zones. And whenever you get this into control, whenever you can master this part of your life, you will see that it helps a lot. And of course, working out early in the day is really recommend it. So if you can perhaps take a 10 to 15 minutes morning walk, if it's possible for you. And if it's not, you could do it any time of the day. But the best way, you know, the way you can think about it is making it easier for yourself, you know, so that you don't feel more stressed thinking about doing that activity or working out or anything. So when you walk, um, do you walk on a regular basis? Like, is it on a certain day or is it weekly? Yeah. Uh, I used to do it regularly in the evenings earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that, it was mornings, but mornings got a little hectic. I sh- moved it to evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from last one year, I I have completely like stopped. I go once in a month that I have to like really get myself out to go for a walk by myself. Oh, once a month, right? Okay. But if uh, yeah, if I think of that frequency, it has gone really bad. Okay. But I used to go for regular walks and runs in the evenings before. What do you enjoy the most when you used to do it? What was the you know most enjoyable aspect of walking? Um, 
It used to, um, whenever there were lots of thoughts in my mind, like after work, sometimes it was work related, sometimes mm-hmm. it was at home. And all those thoughts, I when I run, I they just go away. And when I come back, I, I either have some solution for the thing that is troubling me mm-hmm. or uh, I, I feel I felt better yeah. after coming back. Okay, that, exactly. Because walking is like, meditation and movement or just about any kind of yeah. physical activity which i'll be showing you right now so what you could do what you all could do is that whenever you think about workouts create a fun pattern in your mind so whenever we think about workouts it's like oh my god i have to work out i have to get up and i have to do all this that's basically our brain our conscious mind to like stop i don't want to do this so instead, when we can make it something fun, for example, Deepika enjoys walking. So when if you can combine somehow walking into your routine, if you have the time, if you can somehow make it something that I know that if I do this, if I walk after that, I'm going to feel good. So suppose on your daily activity, today is your hardcore workout day. You have to do like squats and push-ups and things like that. And your mind is like, trying not to do it your mind is trying to make up excuses that no just don't wake up you know you're comfortable you know you don't need to do it at that moment create some kind of fun pattern so it could be like putting on music out loud and just having fun in the process it could be giving yourself a short reward Um, not food not sugary food of course or it could be just you know making it similar to an activity you enjoy and it would be my advice that if you enjoy doing something and you know if your heart and your soul feels good like Deepika said she always felt better if you enjoy a certain physical activity then it's like the universal sign that keep doing it you know keep walking or keep swimming or keep dancing because movement is really very important. And now I'm going to show you something which is so important. Like it's going to just, uh, what should I say? It's going to blow your mind, okay? It's something, um, it's been there forever. It's been there since ancient times. It's also there in modern times. It's just that we really don't connect it that way. Okay, do you agree that movement is some form of energy. It usually gives some form of energy, like kinetic energy, right? Uh, If it's so, then perhaps you could put a one in the chat. Does movement create some kind of energy, kinetic or otherwise? Yes, okay. So body movement also creates some kind of energy by hypothesis, we can say that, right? Since movement creates some kind of energy, body movement also makes us feel energetic, right? So that's another thing. But did you know that movement also helps us release trauma? It kind of like makes us feel, it releases the trauma stored in our bodies. And that's something you may experience if you dance a lot, if you do yoga, or like Deepika said, when we walk, we experience a kind of release, am I right? Okay, so what happens here is that our bodies are actually alive. Every cell in our body is actually alive and research shows that it actually holds memory, it actually holds trauma. So any type of creative movement, any kind of movement and the correct movement, of course, it can actually help release trauma. So I'm talking more about Uh, things which you enjoy, like swimming, dancing, walking, running, uh, cardio, Zumba, aerobics, anything like that. All these movements always help us feel more better. It helps us feel relieved. And right now I'm going to go for that thing which I wanted uh, you to understand because if you understand it, it's going to be like having a superpower, okay? Like we agreed, movement creates some kind of energy, kinetic energy, for example, windmills, right? Movement creates some kind of energy. But I would like for you to just see this thing for some time, okay? 
there are different forms of energy, right? Heat, sound, light, mechanical. Movement is present in all forms around us. So for example, in light energy, it's still a kind of energy that's traveling, that's moving. Sound energy is produced by sound vibrations, which is a kind of movement. Chemical energy is produced in the reaction of molecules, which also you know, requires some kind of movement. And mechanical energy, heat energy, we always know that any substance which is cold, it's like, it doesn't have any energy, but when uh, heat is applied to it, it excites the molecules, which is why they move faster, and that movement causes heat energy. So you might be wondering, why is this important? Movement produces energy, and this movement is kind of like a superpower. So the biggest things in life all come from energy, you know? The biggest uh, discoveries we have in science. So think about what you could do by harnessing energy from your movement. It could be like anything. You could possibly even change your life. Because movement is not just, you know, moving our limbs, you know, moving our hands and our legs. It's actually creating something in the background. This is why many spiritual practices have movement. I mean, for example, in the past, people in uh, Native America, they used to do this rain dance. I wonder if you know and if you would agree or not. I mean, whether was it possible to dance and invoke rain or, you know, even in places like India, there are lots of stories of movement, you know, doing something incredible, almost supernatural. So I don't know how true those are, but any kind of movement, you're gonna think about it. Yoga, for example, has such healing effect. When we harness the power of movement, when we harness this energy, perhaps we could do incredible things in our life, in our career, in our relationships, in our souls, you know, in many aspects of life. So it may not only be limited to just getting fit. Of course, that is, that's basically why most of us move. We want to stay fit, we want to stay healthy. But think about all the things you could do by harnessing the energy of movement in your life. And you might be thinking that, okay, this is too much out there. I mean, we know rain dance isn't possible. And we know that in actual reality, you know, yes, movement could be powerful, kinetic energy, heat energy, all these are, you know, some form of movement, but how is it going to change my life? So think about windmills, for example, how does it transform something? How does it bring a change? Think about anything that moves, anything, you know, sunlight, how does it bring a change? So it may be that movement has more potential and more power than we give it credit to. I would also ask you that, can you see the screen, right? You can see the screen, okay. Yes. Okay, great, okay. So as I was saying, uh, I'm just going to go back a few slides that movement is, uh, okay, just a second. Movement is like creates energy and body movement creates some kind of energy. We feel a bit better, we feel more energetic, we feel more productive. For example, when we sit for too long, we really don't feel productive, right? We feel like procrastinating, we feel tired, but whenever a person, even if it's like aged people, you know, who walks every day, they, and uh, people with diabetes or any kind of health condition, they still feel some kind of energy. And body movement also releases trauma and that, any kind of movement in this universe produces some kind of energy, whether it be kinetic, for example, windmills or dams. And we know that different forms of energy are present around us, light, heat, sound, electrical, chemical, mechanical, and all these forms of energy have one thing in common and that is movement. So the question is, if movement can create so many awesome and so many powerful things in life, what can it do in our lives? And do you think your life will get better when you incorporate more movement into your life? And in fact, this is one of my theories and perhaps you could cross check it. 
uh, since a long time, since a decade, I guess, more than 5 million people have died from sedentary lifestyle. And of course, we are, we are like habituated with sitting in front of the computer at our homes, in our offices, most nine to five jobs don't give a break. So people are like stuck in front of the computer all day long, or they're stuck in front of the TV, or they're mostly seated, right? And these are the same people who have a lot of diseases and statistics say that more than 5 million people have died in a year from sitting for too long, from sedentary lifestyle. So we need to go back to the time we had movement in our life. It could be any form of movement that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be just fitness oriented. And I want to show you, I want to you know, make you think that what could movement do in your life if every form of movement around us creates such massive energy, okay? It has the power to change the state of your mind. So what happens when we move, for example, when we walk, when we dance, when we swim, when we exercise, our body releases a feel-good neurotransmitter called endorphin. So this is basically what's responsible for us to feel good. So you may be wondering, I don't feel good doing 20 push-ups, you know? Why don't I feel good? So when we do a, like workouts which are too stressful, Perhaps, you know, the theory may not apply, but it still applies. I'm coming back to that few slides later. But normally, especially like Deepika said, when we walk, when we exercise, our body relaxes. And this is basically our natural pattern, you know, sitting in front of the computer for eight hours straight. This is not why the human body was designed. In fact, the more we sit for too long, for many, many hours, the more we are prone to stress, anxiety, depression, and the more we, we, sorry, the more we move our body, the more relaxed we feel, the more you know, healthier we feel, the more open we feel, com completely opposite to those feelings of stress and anxiety. So I would like for you all to think about one a disempowering belief and to replace it with one empowering belief related to movement. For example, perhaps your disempowering belief would be, I don't like to work out, I don't have time. What could you replace it with? You could say it in the chat, I'll give you some moments for that. Find out what's keeping you from going full on in any kind of workouts in the weight loss challenge. For example, I don't have time and replace it with an empowering belief, okay? I'm going to give you two minutes to think about it and you can write it in the chat, uh, what that factor is and how you can replace it.
Okay. So. Okay. Rekha says I'm too. I feel like I'm too old to work out. Okay. And Deepika says that I can think better after working out. Okay. Okay, great. Deepika says that I don't have enough time for it. That's the disempowering belief. And okay. Yeah, so I had put the empowering one before and then the disempowering. No problem. One. No problem. Okay. Okay. So yes, uh, it's it just takes like small shifts, but you guys are doing absolutely great. You know, uh, it is really just a small shift in our mindset that from thinking that we cannot do something, we immediately switch to hey, I can do that. For example, Reka said that she used to feel like she's too old and workouts are too difficult for her, and her empowering belief is that yeah, she could start with short easy steps to reach her goals you know uh, yes take it like slow try not to do too intense workouts in the beginning and then always talk to a doctor of course um talk to a professional and uh, I, i'm sure you could like do something that you enjoy without taking too much stress and it could also be something as simple as walking or anything that you enjoy yoga okay and Deepika said that, yes, before she used to feel that like she does not have enough time, but now she feels like she feels better. I, I can think better after workout. Yeah, so I would really like to, you know, focus on this point that Deepika has and what she also mentioned sometimes back that after taking a walk, she always used to feel better. And, you know, she always had more clarity. I mean, that is the word, right? Am I right, Deepika? Y yes, the clarity it brings. Okay. okay, and you know what? I mean, this is something many people also have discovered. For example, Steve Jobs, I don't know if it's true or not. He had a really, like, most of his business plans when he had a walk. And that goes for many, many, many people. Most of the time when people, like, move, especially when they go for a walk, they get more clarity, they get good ideas, and somehow their life gets rolling. So... Contrary to what we think that walking might, you know, might take away our time, it might make us, you know, miss out on other things in life. Actually, walking could actually give us that bright idea to start our side hustle, or it could give us an idea to fix something in our life, you know, to make something in our life better. So like I said, any kind of movement, especially walking, is some type of healing energy, some type of energy that in some way makes our life better. So I'm so proud of you all. You guys are doing really great. Do you feel changed after shifting your belief from, you know, from a disempowering belief to an empowering belief? Do you feel like, yes, now I, I think I can, you know, before I used to feel like I don't have time and all that, but now I feel like, no, I can make that uh, progress. I can try and do that. Okay. Okay. So now we move on to the next one. Um, are you getting this? Please move in your screen as well. Today I'm having so much trouble with my Zoom. It keeps on. Okay. Uh, yes, we can see this. It's Somewhere. fading now. It's okay, gone. great. Okay, great. But it's back. <laughs> oh my God. Today my Zoom is just giving me so much trouble. Uh, how do I do this? Okay. I hope this is not bothering too much, is it? Okay, let's just yeah. go on anyways. No, I can't move it. Okay. So when you exercise, you provide a low dose jolt to the brain's reward centers. So what happens when we are exercising even if we don't like it on the first day, is that we develop a new pattern, we develop a new system, and slowly our brain starts to adjust to that, you know, to that new model. So in the past, for example, anybody you can think of, or even yourself, or even myself, in the past when I did not used to work out, and you know, it even the thought of working out felt like, oh my God, I have to work out, it felt so miserable. 
what happened when I did it consistently, even if, it's for, even if it was for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, what happened when I did it again and again is that the, it kind of changed the way I thought. So something which used to make me feel lethargic, which used to make me feel miserable, soon became my reward system that, oh my God, I'm going to walk out. I mean, no, I'm going to walk. That's going to be so awesome. So what happens is that the system of the brain that helps you anticipate pleasure, feels motivated and maintain hope. When you do your exercises or any kind of workout regularly, the reward system in our mind remodels itself. Mainly because it gets a dopamine boost every time we work out, uh, every time we walk or do any exercises, endorphins, the feel good hormone gets released. And every time this happens, when it happens again and again and again, what happens is that over time, you actually love doing the workout. It actually feels like, okay, now is my time. I'm going to do the workout. And soon you will feel like a new version of yourself has emerged, you know, someone like Rekha who works out regularly or Deepika who works out regularly and she enjoys it and she has time for it. Uh, our dopamine is a neurotransmitter which is basically responsible for pleasure in our brain. And this also happens with sugar as well. You will notice that people who are like really addicted to sugar, if that was me in the past. I used to have like, if I had a cake, a birthday cake, I would have five slices, you can say. Like I would keep on having and having because I never felt satiated, okay? I used to feel like I need to have more of it because every time I had it, I had this dopamine boost. I felt pleasure. And my brain saw it as, okay, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm loving this experience. Have more sweet, have more sweet. And in this way, it kind of, upgraded the level so i came to a point and all of us comes to a point that just having one sweet or having one chocolate or having one slice of cake is not enough because our brain loves it so much it keeps on getting addicted to it and that's why having five or six slices of cakes finally satiates that and what happens when you do a detox or when we regular, like when we change our workout schedule or something like that, is that the dopamine structure remodels itself. So right now, when I'm not having sugar for almost a month, you can say I have it on few days, but definitely not every day. I have it like once a month or at least two or three times a month. What happens is that now I don't even need that much. Before I used to need a lot of it and oh no, this is not enough. I need another slice. I need another one. Right now, I feel like, okay, this is too sweet. How on earth did I have something like this in such great quantity? You know, our brain kind of rearranges itself and it rearranges the dopamine reward system we have. So that's why when you have a sugar detox, like we are having throughout this challenge, you are going to see that after staying away from sugar for even 21 days, your brain is going to feel happy with even a small part, part of it. And of course, you could always treat yourself, especially after the challenge. And the main idea of this challenge is to level up our habits, is to upgrade our habits to suit our lifestyle and to suit our needs. So you're going to see also with workout, when you're working out constantly for 21 days, uh, you're going to see that this is going to become a new version of you. And after that, your brain is going to feel motivated it's going to anticipate pleasure with the thought of workout so that you know you just need to push through that zone of discomfort to come to comfort zone and it, it is going to take a bit of time and practice but however when you keep on doing it consistently working out becomes the new comfort zone because our brain then registers it as okay you know it's time to work out we have been doing this for a long time now this will become your reward system and that is why in almost anything in life, just taking the first step, just beginning something is the hardest part. And when you keep doing it and doing it and doing it, it becomes your new comfort zone. At that moment, not doing a workout for a few days will feel you know, uncomfortable. You'll be like, oh my God, I didn't walk today. I didn't do my workouts today. You're going to feel like a different reality on that zone, okay? 
So right now I'm going to give you another activity. I would like for you to create a power phrase for yourself, you know, something like your mantra that you could use to, it's something like your empowering belief, but it's going to be something you're going to say it right now and you can say it or think about it again and again so that you feel really motivated to not just work out, but to create any kind of shift in your life. For example, on the first day, there was a participant named Karen. She had her power phrase on that day. She said that I have done this before and I can do it again and nothing is going to stop me. Okay. So you think of something like that, which you, you can use whenever you feel demotivated. Now, it doesn't have to be related only to workout. It could be something like you're having a bad day and or you're feeling like really low in confidence you're going to use this power phrase to keep you know switch yourself back to confidence to switch yourself back to power so karen's one is something like that you could have something like that that i have done it before and i can do it again or i can do anything okay so i'm going to give you some moment and think about a power phrase you can use in your life Anytime you feel a little bit of less confidence, you can use it to guide yourself and to, you know, bring yourself out of that confidence, out of that lack of confidence. And, to, you know, it's going to be like your superpower. Every time you say it or every time you think about it, it's going to turn on that superpower. So what can that be? Think of a power phrase. I'm going to give you like... Two minutes to think about it. Okay, Rekha said that I have won many things in my life when I was in school. And if I try, I can do anything now too. Of course you can, Rekha. Uh, this is awesome. Yes, I love that energy. I love that spirit. Deepika says that I'm stronger than this. Yes, Deepika, go. <laughs> you are doing it, girl. I am stronger than this. You are much stronger than this. And you can accomplish anything in your life because you are a superwoman. And Kara says that stay prayed up and never give up. Of course, yes, I, I really feel that as well. I'm kind of like, not religious, I'm kind of spiritual. Like I believe in the universe, the creator, and I love this statement, Kara. 
stay prayed up and never give up. So what I want to do right now is not just with fitness. I want you all to really think about your power phrases, each of your power phrases. And anytime in life you feel like, um, there, you know, in life what happens is that circumstances around us or even our own limiting beliefs, our self-doubt, this keeps on coming out. And this really prevents us from living our life like full on, from living the best version we can be. So we all have a lot of potential. And what happens is that with doubt, with limiting beliefs, with ideas like I'm not enough or, you know, how am I going to do it? I cannot do it. How am I going to get this workout done? Or there are lots of, um, what should I say? There are lots of things which stop us more from inside us rather than from outside us. And when we come back to our power, when we have this power mantra, you know, in terms of fitness, in terms of life, whenever we have this power affirmation, power phrase, we can switch back immediately. For example, I'm going to use, all of them are great, but I'm going to use Deepika's one that I'm stronger than this. Anytime I feel really low in life, I'm going to use Deepika's power phrase that, no way, I don't, I cannot feel like this, you know, I'm much more stronger than this, and I'm going to get myself out of this situation. And all of your power phrases are really great. Anytime I feel like, anytime I feel less of myself, that I cannot do something, or, you know, something which is too big for me, I can think that, no, in the past, I have won many things. I haven't really won many things in my school, but I have done pretty good stuff in my school. So when I have been able to do those, I can also do these. And I'm also going to think that, yeah, I should keep praying and I should never give up. The universe is taking care of me. The universe is taking care of you. It's taking care of us all. So anytime, you know, what we are going to feel whenever we say this power phrases, we're going to feel a different energy in our body compared to the energy we had, you know, before it. And of course, we're, we can use these power phrases every day before going to sleep, after waking up. But the moment we really need to use this power phrase is when we are feeling the lowest, when we feel stressed, when we do not feel confident. That's the moment we are going to use this power phrase. So I would like for you to like write it down in your diary, in your journal, or have it somewhere in your laptop, in your phone, so that anytime you feel stressed, you feel low vibes, anytime you feel unhappy, you can look at it and instantly you will feel a change in your body and some kind of energy would come into you. And of course, as we are talking about weight loss, you can use the same principle. Anytime you feel demotivated, anytime you feel that the workouts are too tough, the schedule is too tough, you're not being able to keep up with the workouts, you can just use your power phrase that I'm stronger than this and I should never give up and I should keep trying, right? So this is something I really wanted to give you, each of you. It's going to help you a lot in your lives. Okay, the new thing, the next model I'm going to talk about, which is really going to motivate you to work out, is use your social media. Normally what happens is that social media uses us, you know. Uh, before there was a time I used to feel like I have to post a selfie every day when I was younger. I have to post a selfie every day. Oh my God, what are my friends going to think about? How many likes I get on my selfie? That's how the social media kind of uses us. You know, it makes us feel like, uh, it makes us feel judged. It makes us feel like there is nothing else in life other than this. So what we are going to do is that we are going to use social media for our purpose. Since this event is all about rebranding, it's all about, you know, becoming a, a different version from who you were, much better, much stronger, much happier, because that's how we want to step into 2022. We do not want to drag, you know, the feelings we used to have of stress, the negative feelings, the negative circumstances. We do not want that in 2022. We want to be fit, we want to be strong, we want to be happy, we want to be energetic. So imagine how you want to be after this challenge or after this month or after December 31st. How do you want to be? You want to lose weight? How much weight? 
and what do you need to do to get there? So you're going to use social media in that way that you're going to prevent yourself. You're going to stop yourself from uh, posting pictures. So if you use a lot of Facebook for one month, don't post any pictures or for two months, you know, until 2022 comes. I mean, this is something you can do, you cannot do, but this is something that is really effective, especially for people who are struggling to lose weight. Um, it isn't really that much effective if, we, if it's just mindset we're talking about, because that is always not um, visible physically, although it can be. Uh, you, I can always see when somebody's energy shifts. For example, when I'm watching their YouTube videos, I can see that, yeah, this person has a different energy, but that's a different thing. So if you use a lot of Facebook, if you use a lot of Instagram, if you use a lot of TikTok, you could post other things, but not your picture. And what you're going to do is that when you're stopping yourself from, you know, posting about yourself, posting your pictures on social media, you're going to constantly work on yourself, especially on your weight loss goals. You're going to work out extra hard. You're going to keep up with the intermittent fasting. You're going to do all it takes to kind of rebrand yourself, reshape yourself. So you know what's going to happen? It's going to create a suspense in, among your family and your friends who are on Facebook. So for example, suppose I'm your family member and uh, who should I pick? <laughs> um, should I pick Kara? Okay, let me pick Kara. Suppose Kara, I'm your family member and you always post your pictures on Facebook and for one month you didn't post any pictures so i'll be like okay curious that hey she didn't post any pictures and but i'm not going to think much about it what you are going to do at that time is that you're constantly going to work on yourself it could be fitness it could be on your career it could be just changing your mindset because you know when we become a different version of ourselves when we're happier we kind of really become different right so uh, this actually mainly applies more for weight loss or more for fitness so what you're going to do after December 31st or on December 31st, you're going to post your first picture in two months as this rebrand, your reshaped version of you, as this new version of you, because that's basically what our event is, brand new version of you. So you're going to feel like, you, you know, your friends or your family, they're definitely going to notice and then they're definitely going to ask that, hey, Carl, what, what have you been doing, you know? you look different or your energy is different. And you can then say that, yeah, I have done this challenge or I have started this new project. What happens here is that you might feel like this is kind of like show off, but it's really not like that. It's just, you know, taking advantage of the platform, but more of the time you have, you know, if, it, if you have this feeling of creating suspense, you know, it could be, uh, it could also go for spouse, but probably they live with you. What happens is that your mind will constantly have a deadline that, okay, after two months, I'm gonna post a picture or after two months, he or she's gonna see me. And uh, it's more for yourself though, but you're still going to feel like I'm going to change myself. I'm going to do all it takes, even if it's like, you know, talking less to toxic people in your life, whatever it takes, I'm gonna do it. And when you're gonna emerge out of this, cave out of this you know blank space out of not posting when you're going to re-emerge you're going to become a new version of you so this is something you really can use it has helped many people in the past and it's like a mental trick you can use to rebrand yourself and to reshape your life because when we change your identity our life also kind of changes with it right so and we're almost coming to the end. I, I'm sorry, I think I'm taking a bit of time because of the Zoom problems I had in the beginning. But we're going to finish off really fast right now. So I wanted to tell you that with workouts, always begin with the hardest task, okay? So because our brains are wired up to keep it for the last. So if you're working out in the morning, do the hard workout in the morning. It, and it also goes for anything else, for studies, for uh, projects, for business, do the hardest task, finish it up. You're going to feel more productive. Procrastination can never really get you when you do your hardest task first. And the, another productivity hack is that make friends with a similar circle. So if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to go on a diet, 
look for people around you in your community in social media who have similar interests who are also going through a diet for example in our group we have that because there is something about you know energy around us people who surround us they also have a huge impact in our lives if you're trying to go vegan look for vegan friends if you're trying to go spiritual look for spiritual friends if you are if you are starting a new business then surround yourself with other entrepreneurs other businesses you're going to notice a huge shift because when you do something alone it's like it's only your energy working but when you're doing it in a circle anything fitness business studies whenever you're doing it surrounded by like-minded people it's like their energy combines with you and also it's not just energy dynamics when you are going to go for example if you're going to if you're thinking about going plant-based if you want to have a plant-based diet and everyone around you is like it's non-vegan you're going to have a hard time sustaining that habit but when you have friends with similar interests, they're going to share recipes, they're going to talk about it, they're going to share pictures. So it's going to keep on motivating you to stay in your tracks. So basically, we have reached the end. And um, I would like to ask if you have any questions by the end of it. I'm sure I went a bit quickly at the end, especially because um, I did take a bit more time, but do you guys have any questions related to this or anything else that you can think of? Okay, Rekha asked that, what if we skip a day? I guess you meant, what if we skip a day in the challenge, am I right? Okay, if you, for some reason, if you're doing the 21 days challenge, and for some reason you you faced a trouble on one day, what you're gonna do is that suppose if you faced trouble on day six or on day five, on the next day, you're gonna do that day. like. You're going to do day one, two, three, four. If you have trouble on day five, then just do day five the next day. Like, don't skip any one of the days. You can move it. It's better to do it in, you know, in a flow together. But if you have problems, if you have something unexpected, you can skip a day and simply just do that day on another day. Okay, so I guess for today we are done. Um, I hope to see you all in the next session which is going to be on sunday we're going to have some fun we're going to do some singing and we're going to do some more motivational activities but for today it was really nice to have you all i had so much fun i hope you guys had fun had learned something i hope i have been able to provide value take care and much love to you all thank you Thank you.